Nisha Aruna, and you're listening to Unapologetic. How many of you have seen this video of the gentleman that goes into the Springfield Police Station to complain about a ticket and is basically assaulted and assaulted some more and arrested? Like, check out this video. A lot of these police videos, they will always find no issue. And I'm going to throw this back to historical context, right? It matters. You're talking about an organization that evolved from fugitive slave catching. And with that was the law on the books, the Fugitive Slave, uh, actually the Casual Slave Killing Act of 1619, right? Which said, if I left you to care for my enslaved people and they tried to escape or did something foul and you hurt or killed them, then there would be no felony charge. There would be no harm, no foul. Like you didn't do anything wrong. That is the foundation for this organization that we have come to know as the police. That is what they are based in, in this country. We have to accept that and know that. And that's why when we can watch a video, not being a part of this organization and say, oh my gosh, like how could they do that? And it's how the police commissioner could watch the same video and not see a problem. This is indoctrination into a system, an institution that says, this is how we do what we do. This is the acceptable way. It's why when they are confronted with suspects that are white or white presenting, they come out alive because there isn't that association for the officers with everything else, the cultural implications, the color implications. Because I would ask this question about lots of different things. How did Dylan Roof kill nine people in a church and still come out alive after killing nine people? But Philando Castile is dead. Alton Sterling is dead. Unarmed black people are dead. How does that happen? History matters. The context matters. It's the playbook. It's what do you get in training? Not just in the police academy, but in our culture. This stuff is woven into our fabric and we don't talk about it. We don't talk about our real history. And perhaps if we did, if we could have these hard conversations and come to, come to a reckoning, then we could get somewhere. But until we do that, we're going to have this disconnect where here's the police commissioner looking at a video and saying, I don't really see a problem. And everybody else saying, how do you not see this? How could you not see this? How could this be okay? And the reason that it's okay is because you're talking about an institution that evolved from this place of you're taking care of my property. It's coming from this place where as a society, it was decided that we could own people. But here we are in 2020, it's like, we know, you can't own people, right? These were people held in bondage and treated like property. And then at the convenience of the slave owners, oh, we need to count these bodies so that we can have representation, right? So we've got to reckon with the biggest lie that was ever told. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell the truth. That's how you combat a lie. You tell the truth. So this, these are all things rooted in history. And it doesn't matter which video you pick, 
there is always a department that can say, well, this was the reason, this was the reason, this person was resisting, they did this, they did this, oh, it's their history, they had a criminal record, right? That's always the case for the black and brown suspects. It's the worst thing that they ever did that could justify the inhumane treatment. But for the most reckless, dangerous uh, white suspect, it's how upstanding they were. And they were like this magic child and they did all these wonderful things. It's never about what they actually did. And if it is, it's under the context of, well, they are having mental health challenges, which is an entire uh, conversation for another podcast about why that even exists. It's the one-off instead of being attributed to the entire culture. And that's the thing that happens in black and brown culture. Well, one person does a thing and it's, in, it's attributed to the entire group. But when a white person does it, it's, oh, well, this one thing happened to them or there's some, there's some excuse and some reason, right? And they can't be punished because that would destroy them, right? Like black people don't get destroyed being thrown in jail or beaten in the streets or even murdered. That, that seems like destruction to me. What do you think?